Hey everyone, welcome to Kempner Sports. My name is Rev Trev and I am a huge Packers fan who loves fantasy football. In fact, I love different jerseys. Um, I Fantasy football has been so much fun. So I'm a diehard Packers fan, but love to help people in fantasy football and especially uh, make videos like this because if you want to compete and you want to contend, and you want to win a championship. I'm telling you right now, I've won so many championships. You want to listen to this kind of advice, okay? Because there's a lot of voices that are saying the same thing. And I just think at the end of the day, why are the lists always the same? So I, I don't agree with it that it should be the same. I've got some people on this top 10 running backs list that you will be shocked that I have so low and surprised I have so high. So just wanted okay it's 1 30 in the morning i've already done all the research i've been thinking about this video for for days and weeks actually working on my list normally i go on i'm going on vacation uh tomorrow night and so i have to get this done right now and i, I want to do that by the way my wife found this jim brown jersey come on cleveland browns jersey at the thrift store for $12. So I I'm also need an excuse to wear this jersey. Um, but yeah, okay, let's dive in. Hit that like and subscribe for all kinds of content that you're going to be able to compete, contend, and win a championship, okay? So number one, I mean, this one isn't really surprising, but for me, it's Christian McCaffrey. Now, yes, he played all 17 games last season. He was traded to the 49ers during that trade deadline. He was learning a new system and he still came in second as the number two RB in all of fantasy with a full season with the 49ers. I have him as my number one overall. So don't forget 2018, right? CMC had 385 fantasy points and he followed up in 2017 or 2019 with 471 fantasy points. Guys, I know that was a long time ago, but that was way better than what quarterbacks do. The elite, the top end quarterbacks do in a season. He was outscoring quarterbacks. So yes, he's had some injury issues. Now he's on a team that's even better. And last year he had 356 fantasy points and he was on a bad team and went to a great team. And so, you know, Joe Mixon was the 10th best running back Last season, he only had 241 fantasy points. So there's a big difference between CMC and number 10, like like league win winning dif difference. Okay, so my number two was the number one last year. And most people, when you think about Austin Eckler, you think about two uh, different thoughts, dynamic and injured, right? Now, he faced a lot of injuries over the years, but he's an absolute PP. PPR monster. And so he's a guy you want on your team. He was number one in fantasy last year for, for running backs. He ended up with 18 touchdowns. And that's going to be definitely difficult to repeat. But I think he's still up there in the 15, 14, 15, 16 touchdown range. So he's, as long as he stays healthy, he it's, it's the regression in touchdowns is realistic, is is probably happening but the domination is still it's not unrealistic at all so that's my number two number three is Saquon Barkley now I know a lot of you guys are saying how can you have him this high well we know that he's phenomenal talent right a few years ago removed now from those nasty nasty injuries Barkley proved and I think he's going to prove again this year that he goes back into elite form um, he is also very angry about his contract situation, so I think he's going to be running angry and proving himself. Now, can he get back to his, uh, his was, I think it was his rookie year, the 385 fantasy points? I'm unsure about that, but I do believe that he's going to get over 300 fantasy points this year, and I would be very happy with it. So that's why I have him as my number three. Now, number four is from the Cleveland Browns. I don't know if you can think of a more consistent running back than Nick Chubb, okay? Now, 
their O-line is always good. And they're, even when their quarterback is not, their O-line's always good. So there's no Kareem Hunt at taking carries or catches. And Watson is going to have a productive year. Yes, there is um, Johnson is there, but uh, they literally have no one else. And they don't need anyone else. Uh, oh, sorry, that's for the next one. <laughs> they, they do have someone else. So, but I do think it just gives gives him so he gets enough rest. Um, I believe that he this opens up these things open up the run game for Nick Chubb, and uh, actually his we should call him Nicholas Chubb because he this man deserves respect. Okay, so um, I have him higher if he wasn't in, if it wasn't a PPR league if it's just a standard league I actually have him ranked higher. So number five is the guy who is there's no one else on that team and it's uh, Derek Henry. Now there's a reason they call Derek King Henry because he's unbelievable when healthy he's arguably the best running back in football people keep forgetting about his dominance he can win you a week by himself they literally like i said have no one else they don't need anyone else he's consistently elite and he's if you want a certain ceiling you want henry because he doesn't go below that i mean of course barring injuries all these things are barring injuries right so number six is Josh Jacobs. Uh, if you had Josh Jacobs last year, you probably were in the finals. That's how good he was. People were drafting him in the fourth, fifth, sixth round, and he ended up as RB number three with over 300 fantasy points, PPR points, right? So last year was his career year. Will he do it again? Probably not, but he's good enough to stay at the number one, uh, like first round RB. Uh, section there. So fun fact, how old, when you think of jo Josh uh, Jacobs, how old do you think he is? You know, when I was thinking about that question, my answer was 30. He's 25 years old. That is insane that he's still that young. Okay, number seven is Tony Pollard. Some of you might be very surprised that I have Tony here, but I'm just, people are either like, meh, or like very high on Tony Pollard. What's not to like about this guy? There's very few running backs that are not in a committee, and Pollard is one of those guys that are going to be clear RB1. And with Zeke gone, now I believe that he's going to get in the 250 to 280 point range. He has something extra out there. He's been better than Zeke for years. And so listen to me. It is Tony Pollard season. So... I'm high on him, number seven on my list. Now, number eight. Some of you are still shocked. Like, Trev, why don't you have Bijan Robinson yet? Because right now, I'm going in him at my number eight. Now, the hype train, in my opinion, is so insane on, on Bijan Robinson. A college phenom, I get it. The fantasy world is believing that he's a can't-miss talent. Just like when Zeke came into the league, just like when Saquon came in the league, they are believing and trusting that Bijan is going to be that good. And I just have a hard time uh, ranking a running back this high without him, seeing him play a stamp. Now, people have him going sixth overall. Like his ADP is sixth overall. I would have so many wide receivers above Bijan because, listen, rookies, they don't always pan out. Now you're saying he's an elite talent. Yes, I agree. He, I'm not saying he's not good, but he's young, he's inexperienced, this is a different league, right? So, um, I've seen him go as high as the number one overall pick. I think that's insane. Now, if you want to do that, go ahead. It's your team. Do whatever you want. But if you are giving my advice, there's no way I'm doing that. I think the hype train is too much for me, but I understand the arguments of why he can be drafted so high. So first, I want to see him in preseason. If he's dynamic and amazing in preseason, I'm going to rank him up in the in the fantasy, um, uh, go up in my fantasy board there. So uh, I'm, I'm high on him because I got him in the first round, but I'm not drinking the Kool-Aid yet. So I know. Okay, number nine is someone who I want to have at number five. But it's Jonathan Taylor, and his situation is ugly with a capital UG. Okay, he. Uh, 
Now, in 2021, he was the number one running back in fantasy with 373 fantasy points. But last year, the Colts were terrible, and his and then he had his injury. Part of that them being terrible is because JT was out, and he ended up. Um, and because of it, they ended up be drafting fourth overall in the NFL drafts because they just had, had had struggled so bad. So I know there's a lot of risk with JT. There's a new co rookie quarterback, right? He, he's coming back from injury from last season. And this contract situation is absolutely ugly. It's public. It's... Oh, it's just awful. So I'm I'm watching this situation closely. If he plays, you could win weeks. If he keeps dropping, he might drop into the second round. You might get Jonathan Taylor in the second round. And then, you know, just watch that qu quickly and closely. And, uh, man, I don't know. JT is still an elite talent, super young. Uh, they need to get him on the field so that they can be competitive. Okay, number 10. Now, there's so many people that you could have here. Um, you can have Joel Mixon. You can have Stevenson. There's arguments for all these guys, right? There's uh, Brees Hall, which I'm nervous about his um, uh, injury, coming back from his injury. So that's why I don't have him there. I'm going with my boy Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones. Now, I understand why everyone's down on the Packers this season because they're just unsure. They don't know. They either think they're going to be terrible or they just don't know. So what they're doing is they're avoiding all Packers players. And I can totally understand why you're doing that, except for when it comes to Aaron Jones. I'm telling you, I'm not nervous about what Aaron Jones is going to do. We still have a very good O-line. And so I I get it that you're nervous. But as a Packers fan, I'm not nervous about what he's going to do. I know that he's dynamic. Um, he's, he's a difference maker. And his floor is 230 fantasy points. And his ceiling is 310. So at 10, he's a great value, and uh, I would highly recommend him. Now, if you feel more comfortable going with Stevenson, Mixon, Brees Hall, or maybe some other guys I haven't mentioned there, go with them. But for me, Aaron Jones is someone that I can rely on, that I can feel like I can go heavy in wide receiver and pick up Aaron Jones. Like, Aaron Jones is dropping to third, fourth round. Are you kidding me right now? This is insane. So you might even get him in, uh, you won't get him in round six. It'll be too too late. Someone will take him before that. Anyways, so these are my top 10 running backs this season. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. I know it's super late, but I wanted to get this out for you. And I hope that you can compete and contend and win a championship. Thanks so much for watching.